Welcome to my mine. We are mining diamonds. We are not a strip mine. We don't have to fly mobs. Welcome to my mine. Play that note block nicely. Show me all those emeralds. We don't gotta dodge lava. Unboxing part of this video, and I have my dad here who's helping me unbox. And this is what you get from what I showed you earlier. So I guess we'll just start. You ready? Ready. Okay. We're just gonna make a slit on here. Here, Dad, I want to stay out of the way. Or you can, yeah, yeah, you do it. I'll get the tarp. I'll get that side. All right. So we're opening it from the top. And hold on, we can take our time with this. Okay. Okay. So. It looks like the first thing you get from when we open it this way with the UPS label facing up is you got this inner box, but you also get this piece of paper on here. 49cc two stroke fuel, I mean full assembly video, www.youtube.com watch. It's here, let me show this to you. So just looks like you get a little piece of paper and it looks like you get some instructions. Um, this might be an owner's manual. I think this is an owner's manual. Be sure to read this. This looks really important. Even if it has some warnings on it, still read it. Yeah, it looks like it has about four pages. Um, so just read this before you do anything. I'm gonna read this and we're gonna get back to an unboxing video just to be safe. Okay, so I read this piece of paper. And I found out it is very important and you do want to read this because it has some very important information regarding the bolts being tight and the proper adjustment and making sure your bearings are lubricated with silicone spray. You have to do that or else the bearings will, um, they will seize up and they'll, to they'll totally get destroyed. So mu you must read this if you wanna actually make your scooter work. Do not skip this at all. This is very important. I've read it until the troubleshooting. I'm, I'm not, I haven't even opened yet so I'm not gonna read the troubleshooting just yet. But I'm gonna, Put that in a very safe place because you do not want to lose that. Let me shake a drink. Um, we're gonna watch it now. I don't know about how should we do this. Do you think? Because I don't want to just like tip it over. That doesn't seem very good. I to do. Open that box. All right, let's do that. So. came in and now this is the actual product box I believe and the box has looked a little bit damaged just a little bit but I don't think that's gonna be a problem see right there oh wow it's, it's probably fine though all right so let's pick up this box and move it there for now actual box. This is what the scooter is. Whoa. Here. 
Wait, I, here, don't do anything yet. Let's get this in closer. So that's what it looks like on top. You get an extra owner's manual um, as well. So you get, looks like you get two owner's manual, owner manuals. And you get, I got silver and that's what it looks like. So we're gonna move the camera back so we get a good shot. And now let's move the, the box so it's parallel to this environment. And there's, uh, yeah, let's look at the owner's manual first. So you get, Looks like you get an all-terrain sticker. I'm assuming you put on the footboard where you put your feet, because you see on the videos um, it says all-terrain on the footplate. So let's open this. It's a Ziploc bag. I'm just gonna. I think I, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna like lay it out. So get an owner's manual, second owner's manual, and. Oh, th this has like a little bit of a grip tape feel and sticker. And then if you get something important, you don't want to lose this. This is your little, this is your little pin for your seat post. It has a little keychain kind of ring on it. Probably don't want to put it on your keychain though. And you got a ball, you got one ball, presses in. Very important if you want to have your seat, don't lose that. Looks like nothing else in here. Put that on there. And it looks like the, the second easiest thing to get out, because it looks a little bit compact in there, the second easiest thing to get out is this box right in the middle. And I'm guessing the, oh, you know what? Actually, I don't think this is the wheel, the front wheel. This um, looks like the front wheel's in there already. So let's go open this up. weird looking box. Kind of weird knife skills. By the way, this is December 2nd, 2017. Just wanna make that clear. Okay, so it looks like you get your fender in here. Maybe I should open up the box a bit more. I have my cutting supplies near me. Here, come over. Are you working on the camera? Here. Feeling do this. Okay, so that was kind of a weird little thing there. So it looks like in the video the guy had silver and he also had a when he put it on the fender, he had a carbon fiber fender. Looks like you get a carbon fiber fender with some bubble wrap on it, like you said in the video. And I've watched a video, just to make that clear. And let's unbox this little thing. So this is what it looks like. It has some clear, um, I mean it has some protective thing on the, um, on this little reflector here. It looks pretty good on the, on the top, on the bottom it looks a little weird, but I'm not concerned because it's going to get all dirty from dirt, so put that there. And looks like what you also have is your street muffler. Um, some bubble wrap again. It's good. Keeps things good. And yeah, so bubble wrap. Yeah, that over there. So this is what this looks like. Your street muffler. Here, zoom it up. Move it up. So. It looks like this is, it's blue here because this looks like a protective thing. I'm pretty sure it's chrome under that. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what it looks like on the end. 
So that's what this looks like. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna use this because over here in Washington, it's all hilly. So, you know, it's all bumpy and stuff. So I'm just gonna use a stock muffler, I think. I might try this on at some point. That's what you get for now. So put that right there. It's kind of heavy too. It has good, some good stuff in it. Looks like you got a piece of paper. Yeah, it's just talking about the muffler. So, you know, we'll put that there. So that's, is what in this box. No wheel, wheels in there, looks like. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm doing this really slow, but I wanna do this slow because I wanna do this right because I've been waiting for a long time. I also wanna make a good video. <laughs> it doesn't have to be entertaining, it just has to be good. Okay, so next thing um, looks like is your front wheel and um, here that's what it looks like so far in the bubble wrapping let's get this open and when you're using a knife be really careful not to nick the tire because that would not be good it feels like it already has some air in it like it said in owner's manual so that's good maybe use a knife really careful make sure you don't nick it Oh yeah, that's some pretty good off-roading tires right here. So if you need to go off-roading, or if you just want to, you got the tires to do it, which is good. Just be careful about the disc brake. And let's see, nothing else in here, I don't think. Here's what the wheel looks like. Is that good lighting? Yeah. Okay. It looks really, really, really strong in here. It has a chrome, it has some sort of a metallic finish around here. Kind of a silvery color. I don't know what you call it. And inside it looks black and it's not plastic or anything. It's, it's really, it feels really strong. In the bearings, it looks like it has a spacer in it. You can hear the spacer in there rattling around. That's really important, you want that spacer. Um, what I would do is I would, they say you use silicone spray, what I would do is I would take some wheel bearing grease. This has a removable cover, it's not metal. It's, it's like a plastic or rubber, it's blue. So you can just take a pick and you can get that out. So what I would do is I would do some wheel bearing grease in there. And on the same side, Looks like I got some wheel bearing grease, or I mean, just some, you know, other bearing in there. Looks the same. And this is your front wheel because there's no sprocket thing over here. Got your little valve stem there, 90 degrees. Um, and your disc brake looks pretty good. So that's this. We'll put this aside for now. Really good tires, looks like. Okay, what next? Um, looks like. There is some styrofoam in here, so if you don't want to make a mess, try to be a little careful. <laughs> um, oh, I believe, I believe that this is your toolkit. So this is styrofoam, just kind of throw that there. So here's your toolkit, and looks like it's a little dirty. That's okay. And there's a little zipper on it, so you know you can zip it, zipper it open and close. I don't know, there's some stuff on it, but that's okay. Toolkit. Nothing important. Let's see what's inside. So, nothing's in here. So, looks like you got spark plug wrench, or spark plug socket, I mean. Um, here is your valve extender. Um, it looks, it seems to be a plastic, um, that's what it looks like on the crappy old video. The quality is really bad, you don't see what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Kind of a weird shape, but it'll work. One piece, looks like. That's the valve extender, that's what you got. That's how you fill up your rear tire. Rear tire. Put that there, oops. Got a... You got a 10 millimeter on one end, eight millimeter on the other. 
We've got 19, 17. We've got 13 and 15. Um, this looks like a, a little multi-tool. It looks like your handle and then this looks like your handle has a little slit in there and you got um, a fill set and your flathead goes in there. It has slits on here so it fits in there so you can turn it and kind of just looks like pushes in there just like that. Good? Pretty good. Might want to consider using your own tools because I don't know. I don't I don't know about these but it seems like it worked for me. Um, yeah, looks like you got a couple of Allen wrenches. I'm gonna lay them out. So that is what you get in your toolkit. This, this is what you get. I'm gonna leave that out and put this somewhere safe. What else? Looks like we got our seat. Pretty straightforward. Bubble wrapped. I like, I kind of like the packaging. It seems really good. It seems really good. This looks like there's a lot of styrofoam, but it can be cleaned off. But that's good. Let's see what we got for a seat. Careful. <laughs> if you're going to use a knife, you might want to use the Dolcer Vision if you're a little kid. I'm not no little kid. trick is to be really careful when you're using a knife not to nick what you're opening. So it looks like you got a seat. It looks pretty big. It looks like it'd be really comfortable for something like a scooter. Not something for a bike if you're really a cyclist. You probably wouldn't use something like this. You probably wouldn't buy, you know, but this is not a cycle. This is not a bicycle. This is a scooter. So this looks good. Okay. So you got two springs. That might help. Um, there's, it's, not, it's nothing special. There's no, it's not like there's any dampeners in here, but you know, you got springs, so that looks like it'd be okay. Two springs on the rear. And it looks like you got your mounting system for your small pole on your seat post. And you got two nuts, you tighten these down to make it tight on the small seat post. Pretty cool. So it actually comes with the seat, seemed like. Other scooter manufacturers say, you know, you can't sell with the seat. Um, oh, there's a little washer in here. Um, there's a little washer in there. There was something else, just dirt. Okay, this looks empty. So on the front of your scooter, inside the box, there's a little washer. That's where I found mine might be rattled around or anything, something like that. But I don't know, I'll see what that's for in a minute. Put that there for now. Um, gas tank, looks like one of the last things we can get out by hand before we get out the scooter. Kinda wanna be careful. It's wrapped around the, the scooter just a bit, okay, there we go. So this is what your gas tank looks like. A little yellow sticker on there. It looks like it says, attention, use oil mix of 25 to one or, or the and warranty, war warranty, warranty's void. I don't know. That's kind of weird phrasing. Okay, um, it says use 32 to one, but I think this is like a universal kind of gas tank. Um, is it? Yeah, camera, there we go. I think this is like a universal gas tank, so I think you could just use 32 to one. This might be used on different scooters. I don't know, that's kind of strange. I've heard that that's what some, that's what some of the people say online. You know, their owner's manual says use this and that, but the gas tank says something like 25 to one or something that's different. Is there a problem? Okay, just look a little weird. So let's open this up. Be careful not to damage your fuel line while we open this. And the 
Looks like the spring already comes on the gas tank with fuel lines. It looks like a really good gas tank. It looks like it holds a pretty good amount of fuel for, you know, the days of riding. Fuel line looks pretty good. Um, oh, looks like there's a knot in it. Um, they tied a knot in it or something. Here, hold on, let me put this away. Oops. Gotta put that away. So, here's your gas tank. Um, is there enough light? Are you sure? Because you can like read some of the stuff on here. So it looks like you got a gas cap that says gasoline. That's actually helping a little bit. Gasoline and plus sign oil. Um, doesn't say the ratio on the gas cap, but that's okay. And then you got, looks like you got two mounting holes, like in the video as well. Um, Got your gas cap it was loose on here it was screwed down but it was loose and that is a thing i really like to see i like to see gas caps that have a tether because you will never lose it you will never lose it when you're just using it because you know when you got to fill up you got to put it somewhere so you put it on the ground and then, hey you might forget it or it might fall or something off a cliff <laughs> and it looks like looks like there's a gasket in there so it's gonna seal good the grommet looks pretty good on there but it looks like a little bit. Oh, you know why to keep the knot on here? So the spring doesn't go off this way. So you got your grommet. It looks like, yeah, just as the guy said in the video, yellow goes to the bottom with a fuel filter on the end. So you don't have to add any fuel filter on it. Um, it'll work just fine because there's a fuel filter. Can you see in there? Is it camera able to get in there? Here, let me, let me see. See that? There's a little fuel filtering down there. And the clear line just sticks out. So that is what it looks like. Good to know. That's your gas tank. I'm gonna put this back on. Looks like it screws on pretty good, pretty tight. Um, yeah, so that's your gas tank. Put that aside. And that looks like it's it for the small stuff. I think it's time. Yeah, the big guns. Oh, wait, mate, there's one more thing, maybe. Looks like, nope, that's part of the scooter. That's your handlebars. All right, are we ready to do this? Are we ready to mock the big thing? The big one, the actual thing that we waited for, like, months. Or We didn't we didn't order it uh, months ago. I've just been working out the money to get this for months. It took about a week, but there's a weird story with the UPS, but I don't think that's going to happen to you guys. Um... I think it'll be okay, but it got delayed like two times and mysteriously got delivered today. But that's another thing. Um, that's that's our side of the story. But I think it's time to get this one out. Ready, Dad? Okay. I think we should move the stuff out of the way so we have a little bit more room. So. Yeah. Just yeah, so All right. Ready? How should we do this? How should we take it out? Should we hold down the box with the foot or something? I don't know. I don't... Uh, let's see. You got your, your leave the bubble wrap on until we... I've got a handle here. Okay. I got the handle here. Oh. Um, Alright. Oh, it looks like you get a little mixing bottle for your gas and oil. Do you need that? I don't because I got my own thing. There's still some stuff in the box. Uh, piece of styrofoam. Man, we're gonna make a mess with all the styrofoam. Um, it looks like we found one of our little gas tank mounting bolts. Um, spacer, don't lose that. There, let's move this box off of the scooter. small part put around maybe I don't know what that is um yeah the box is a little dirty so before you throw it out make sure you got all your pieces in fact a better idea would be assemble your scooter first and then take out 
and, you, and then you can throw this away. Once your scooter is all assembled and done, there's no more parts you can use, but it looks like there's some parts floating around in here, so that's kind of weird. I don't know. That's kind of not so fun. Good thing it was in another box. Yeah, good thing it was in another box. Um, that looks like all the parts floating around in there. So, it looks like you kind of have to figure out just a little bit of it. Um, but, yeah, keep the box around until you assemble the scooter. That will be my best recommendation. So, looks like we found this. It looks like during shi during shipping or the guys who assembled at the factory didn't put on one of the um, one of the gas tank mounts, and that's a little bit unfortunate because it's kind of all over the box. But oh well, um, this looks does, this does look like you're back. Sorry about that. Um, so it looks like the the thing one of this fell out in the box and. I'm gonna, for now, I'm gonna put it back on the scooter. The gas tank mount. Um, looks like the rubber washer. The spacer goes here for now. So, yeah, and the washer looks like a, a lock washer. So, you know, it's gonna stay on okay. I mean, I'm not washer, a lock nut. The washer nut looks like a lock nut, so that's kind of nice. So yeah, it looks like there's a lot of styrofoam. So just kind of peel it away as best you can, and once there's nothing on it, throw it out. Get out of here. Vacuum it up later. It's okay. Just get the big pieces. Okay, so once that box is empty, it looks like you get a mixing bottle. Um, you can use this or you don't have to use it. Um, personally, I don't think I'm gonna use it because I have a Maxima um, two-stroke mixing bottle for like dirt bikes and other two-cycle equipment in my garage, so I don't think I need this. Um, but if you, need, if you do need this, let me read it to you. On this side it says 50 to 1, 40 to 1, 30 to 1, 25 to 1, um, 600, 500, 400, 300, 200, 100 milliliter, milliliters, fuel mixer, first fill the gasoline on the scale marked gas because it says, I don't know if you can see it but Right here it says gas oil fill lines. Um, you you can figure that out. You can look at it better because yeah. And then first fill the gasoline on the scale marked gas. Then fill the oil to the scale marked 600 milliliters. Shake the mixture. Then fill into the fuel tank. You can use this if you want. Looks like it'd be handy for a start for starters who are just getting into it. Um, this, the cap kind of looks a little wonky. I don't know if I want to mix this up a lot, shake it. Looks like some fuel would spill out, but I don't know. Just something to get you started. I would recommend purchasing a two cycle oil um, bottle, like a good one. Um, or you can use um, what well, I think it's called a right mix or like a ratio, a ratio right. You can use one of those if you want. I think those are just, they don't have enough measurements on them, so I just use a fill bottle. But yeah, so you got a mixing bottle to get you started. I recommend buying something else. Put that to the side. Um, yeah, it just looks like a lot of things are kind of all over the place. Um, that's okay, because I'm, I'm the kind of person who can figure this out. It looks like these little nuts that go on the axle are not locking nuts. I mean, they don't have nylon in them, it looks like. Got a little, take your spacer. There's supposed to be another spacer somewhere. Uh, we'll find it, I think. But, 
Yeah, okay, so found one spacer. So it looks like one of the challenges is going to be finding all the little pieces in the box. But that's okay, I think we can do it. Oh, here's one of the washers right here. So it looks like a lot of the pieces are scattered all over the place. It's kind of not so nice. Could be so wrapped up in some of that. Could be so wrapped up in some of that. It seems like they're, these are really cross threadable. So you want to make sure you don't cross thread these at all. But it seems like it. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. I'm just making a lot of assumptions so far. So now I think we need to start taking up the bubble wrap. Woo wee! Look at that. Brand new 49cc two stroke motor. Look at that little thing. See if we can get this up right to show you guys. Stay up. Doesn't want to stay up. Maybe we can use a wheel to prop it a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Look at that brand new 49cc two stroke motor. Um, it kind of can't see you. Okay, well, here, yeah. move the camera down a little bit. Maybe you guys didn't see all that, but. There, that's what it looks like. I thought I thought you said you were gonna help. I. Oh well. Um, okay, so we got that set. Up. Now I guess I'm gonna kind of unbox this little handbar set. Up. Careful not to cut the wires. Actually, maybe, maybe you could just like tear it open because it looks like it's held together with tape. the muffler box I forgot to look at. This is why I said before you put the scooter together do not throw out anything. This guy over here likes to throw out things before something's not built all the way. Yeah, ha ha, exactly. This looks like your little, you get a gasket for your exhaust and you get two Allen bolts with two lock washers. So you gotta look around in that a little bit because I didn't see that. You have your seat post. Did you, did you find that spacer? I did not see it. Okay, well, I think we'll find it. Here's your seat. Here's your seat post thingy. Here's your small seat thing. The seat goes on top of here and you. you you bolt it on there, and you got a, just looks like a standard thing. You wanna make sure that this is around the little slit, like the guy in the video said, so it'll clamp onto this, so this won't move around. If this is somewhere else, it will not move, this will move around a lot, and you're gonna have a lot of problems, like if you're gonna figure out why is it not closing, I don't have it, you know, you're just gonna run into a lot of problems. So make sure this end, this slit right here, is in line parallel with that slit. And you got two knobs here. And it looks like you got a hole for your pin to go through. This looks like your seat post, so when you put this in, you know, adjust it to your desired height. And clamp it in. It's not very tight right now, so it's, it kind of moves around, so we'll have to tighten that, but so far, that's pretty good. Put this with the parts. Uh, I think this is garbage. Um, okay.
I think we're almost done with the unboxing part. Okay, so I think for the most part, that concludes the unboxing. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble it. I don't know if I'm gonna get it on camera or not. We'll see. Sorry if it was really slow. I like to try to do this very smoothly as I can. So I take my time. I just wanna make a video so you know how this thing works. All right. Okay, so this is the scooter finished, I think, for the most part. Um, this is what it should look like if you get silver. I ordered silver. Um, and what you have is you have your rear brake here, when you see when I pull that, pulls the rear brake down there, and then you have your front brake which pulls the front brake down there. And then you got your kill switch right here. You just push that and it'll stop the engine. You might, I, don't, no, I don't know yet, I didn't start it. You, you might have to push it or you might have to hold it. Um, depends on how the magneto is set up, but you know. And then you got your twist throttle. This does need to be adjusted. For, for me, it needs to be adjusted. <laughs> Quit it, quit it. Mr. Whitefeet trying to dig around for food. I just fed you, stop it. All right, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, this does need to be adjusted a lot. You can adjust it by going here and screwing around with these. This is your locking, this is your locking nut. And this locks against this bigger nut there. And what that does is you can make it tighter, looser, you can adjust it. Also, on the carburetor, there's the same thing. There's there's a locking nut and um, there's your little nut that allows the cable sliding out. And on this one, which is 2017, late 2017, um, you got start and run sticker. It's not like the on and off switch. And, um, and you got EPA certified sticker on there. And messing around with the back wheel is a pain. It just takes forever to get it right. Um, you you have to get the you have to get the axle. The axle the axle is one long bolt and a nut. It's not like old style as it was. Um, a sort of stud and it had two nuts on it and you had to adjust that it's it's a better style now it's just one bolt and a nut on the end um and you got spacers in between this is this one's actually slightly longer than the ones on this side it's about two or three millimeters longer um and it seems like it fits good with the longer the slightly longer one on the left of the scooter so that's that's what you got and you know you got your brakes and stuff, but it's just a pain because then you have to you have to get the chain on, you have to slide in the brake caliper, you have to get it in slots, you have to do all that at one time and one take. It's really annoying, um, but it's worth it because now you get a scooter. And the gas tank, simple. Um, you got your your bolt, your Allen bolt, and you got your rubber washer, and then you got your nut at the end. And same thing on this side. And the guy in the video said it fits better this way. He said um, you can force it the other way, but it fits better that way with the gas tank mount going on to off to the left instead of to the right. And it looks a bit a bit weird because you got that there, and you got that, so it's not equal. But that's why I did it because it fits better. And you know you got EPA thing. You got a little engine sticker. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's that's like it assembled. Um, 
I, I put it to maximum height that I feel is safe for this thing. You can see the little grip things end right right there, but because I'm, I'm kind of a tall person, um, like around 5'10 or so, you know, normal, and you got your pull start. Now, I've heard these pull starts break, so you do want to be gentle with them. You just want to pull it out maybe about here. That's what I heard. Um, and with this, um, it, it's actually kind of nice because yeah, there's little slots it fits into. And I don't know if you can see, but it, it's really, it's a good style because it kind of locks up and when you want to move it down, you push it down and then it locks, see? And when you go up here, it gets raised. So that's really smooth. I like that a lot. Um, putting the seat on was, uh, when the guy in the video made it look a little bit easy. What you have to do is you just line everything up and you push with all your force down on the seat. And when you get the pin in, you just hit it a little bit lightly, very lightly with the hammer. Do not like break it. Do not go whamming it, the hammer. But you lightly hit it, the hammer, on this part right there to get the ball in. He made it look a little easy. For me, it wasn't as easy. For me, I'm just weak. And I did an extra thing. Um, not only did I re-grease the wheel bearings with um, axle, I mean not axle, just wheel bearing grease from a can. I, I used that kind of grease on the front and rear for all four bearings. There's one bearing somewhere in there for the suspension, but I'm not gonna take that part apart. apart. Not only did I do re-grease those bearings, I actually took apart the headset, headset or you know, whatever it's called. And there's two bearings in here and it had crappy Chinese grease on it and it was really bad. Um, and, you, and they didn't even put that much on it. So um, I just took that apart because I had a feeling that they were gonna grease it so well. And I was right, so I used wheel bearing grease in there and it should last virtually forever. With this, um, you can actually you tighten it, these two fasteners here, you can, you might be able to tighten it too much where it's actually rubbing against this part because the metal's bending here and here on this part. So don't over tighten that too much. Although you can go kind of crazy on this one because you really want that to be tight. And make sure it's aligned properly. And to adjust your brakes, what you do is I'm gonna try to lean it so get a bigger better angle what you do is right in the middle right there right in the middle of the screen um, in the middle of that nut is an allen screw it doesn't look like it but there is there's an allen screw what you do is you loosen the nut surrounding the black o-ring looking thing and um, you loosen that because that's a locking nut and you adjust your screw you adjust your little allen screw in there I think it's around 2.5 millimeters. I don't think they actually give you the, the tool to do that, but luckily I have the tools to do that. And you adjust in that a little bit to make the brakes go in and out for one of the pads. And for this one, it adjusts the other pad, and that's pretty self explanatory. You just fit an Allen bolt in there. And same exact thing on this side. It's the same story. Right there is a little Allen thing, and you adjust that and you adjust that as well. And I didn't do anything with the front shocks. I didn't like put any grease on there because um, I don't know really what to do with that, but I don't know, whatever. And you, you, get, this, you get this all-terrain sticker. I put that on, it's pretty easy to put on. Um, what was difficult is in the unboxing part of this video, there was this clear wrap what I had to do to take it off cleanly, I I loosen these four fasteners. There's a nut underneath here. If I can try to. I hope you can see that. I can't see the screen, so I can't move the camera. But there's a nut under there, a locking nut for all four of them. And basically, you just take it out, and this plate moves around just a little bit. Um, it's stopped by 
this shock absorber holding it on. But other than that, you can rip off the plastic stuff and actually get all of it off um, from the plate. So that was a little bit of a pain because I had to get at some sketchy angles, but oh well. Um, putting on the fuel lines, pretty easy. Um, not that much to it. And then down here, somewhere there's a mixture screw right there that right right in the dead center of the screen right there is your mixture screw and I think that's the one that they say to close 80% which is basically you turn it all the way in and you turn it two turns out um, I haven't done that yet I'm, I'll probably get around to that and and about in the middle of the screen it might be a little hard to see Got your idle screw, you can use that to adjust your idle until um, the wheel starts spinning and you can't like turn that anymore. I took out the spark plug, it's some weird Chinese brand, but it looks pretty much like a you know average N N NGK or Champion spark plug, it just had a different label on it, so I think it'll be okay with that. Um, took out the air filter. Um, on this model, there is a plastic like disc in there that holds on the air filter um, and it kind of just stays on and it gets secured in with this so that was a little sketchy to mess around with but I oiled that filter because it's a foam filter um, what else was on this particular model I don't know if it's gonna be the same on all models but right there right down there there's a little screw not that one that one right there there's a little screw and that wasn't all the way in and I'm not sure what happened, but I think maybe they kind of messed it up. They didn't put it in correctly. Um, so I took it out and I put it back in. And I don't know, it, it was a little bit weird. But that got done, I took off the cover and I made sure that the muffler bolts were tight. Um, I went under here and I checked the tight tightness of that screw right there for the motor mount. I believe that is the motor mount screw. And it's really tight, that's not gonna come out. So I think I'm okay. The kickstand, um, hold on. The kickstand is a little weird. Um, you think, hold on, let me get a, let me get a good angle. Okay, I got a good angle. Um, just kind of moved it a little bit. Um, it's kind of a weird thing. There's a spring behind here. Um, it's, you think it's kind of when it goes past here, it kind of clicks like that, but no, it doesn't click. Um, it just kind of stays. And, you know, it, it's kind of not very satisfying, but it works. And it's, the friction is kind of high, so, you know, it'll stay like that. Put on the gas lines, if you didn't see that. Um, so yeah, what you really want to do is you want to take apart your headset and re-grease your headset with really good grease like wheel bearing grease. Also, don't use silicone spray. Um, use something like wheel bearing grease and the bearings because that will last way longer than that little silicone spray. Um, but all, I did see some grease in the wheel bearings. Um, there was actually an okay amount of grease. Um, it, kinda, it was clear and it was kind of weird looking but there was some grease in there. So yeah, but I don't know if this is the correct way to put the fender because um, the light or the, the little reflector thing is kind of blocked by the fender. I don't know, maybe I can just bend that or something, but that's the way it is. And yeah, so that's pretty much it completed. Um, I pretty much tightened most of the bolts. Um, there's any bolts I didn't tighten, it's probably tight enough. Um, maybe I can tighten them, but yeah. And you know, that spring, for me at least, it came pretty good and it's pretty strong, so it'll actually absorb the bumps. But what it sounds like, here I'm gonna do a little. So here's what it sounds like. I'm gonna put the camera on the floor and you know, I'm just gonna do a little demo. That's kind of what it sounds like, um, and one last thing, one of the last things is my major concern 
The, my biggest concern about this scooter, this model, is how they how how they set up the handlebars for you. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, I saw it when I saw it online, and I saw people kind of wiggling it back and forth. That was really concerning, but it does wiggle back and forth. Maybe I can tighten the bolts way more to make it like a lot less wiggling back and forth. But it seems like for the most part, it only wiggles back and forth a little bit. So, you know, it's not as bad as I thought, but um, that's not my favorite design for sure. But it works, it gets the job done. There's, there's some play, but it's usable. So, yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not, I can't really do anything right now because it's all rainy and wet outside. Oh well. And yeah, so that is the finished scooter. Um, yeah, I get a shot from there. And yeah, that's the finished scooter. Today is when we ride the scooter, we're gonna start up and everything. I think I've done everything I needed to do. Lubricate the chain, make sure most of the bolts are tight, re-grease the wheel bearings on this and that, um, put on the fuel lines. So I think we're gonna fire it up. I got 32 to one. Um, I use Lucas semi-synthetic two-stroke oil for, it's like multi-purpose two-stroke oil, so you can use it for some things. Not outboard engines, get used for that. Um, I'm also using some stable in there, 87 octane, not 91 or 93 like they recommend. Um, I mean, they recommend that you use that for veteran scooter, but I think this will be okay. So we're gonna use that today, um, and I don't think there's that much else to do. We greased up a lot of stuff and everything, made sure this and that's tight. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire it up. Are we ready? Okay, let's put some gas in the tank. 32 to 1. Again, that tether really, really does help. And just leave it hanging with that. Shake this up a little bit. I'm almost out, so when I go to the gas station, I'll get some 91 octane. Or 93. Probably 91 because it's cheaper. No spill's really good. They make really good, like, gas cans. And I think we'll just fill it up. Ready? Maybe like this, because I'm almost out. We should just do a little bit. Oh yeah. So just a, just a little bit in there, not not too much. Just in case. Just in case. We need to do something. And I'm using Lucas, so it's gonna be a little blue. That's good. All right, let's go put this over here. It's not sunny out, so I'm not worried about the gas tank being left out. Um, now I got my multi-tool here so you can adjust the carburetor. We're probably going to need to do that. Um, so let's fire it up. Are we ready? First start ever with a brand new scooter. So what you do, a few lines are all the way on, looks like. What you do is press the primer bulb until gas goes in it. Um, don't press it X amount of times because um, it took, it could take a while or it could take almost no time for the gas to get in the primer bubble. So just prime it until you see gas in there. And for me today, gas is coming in here pretty fast. It looks like it's pretty good. That looks okay. So now what I think I'm gonna do is just gonna try to start it up. Put it on start. I did the thing, I did a, I, tur I turned the mixture screw all the way in and I turned it out two and a quarter turns. I turned out an extra quarter because it, it's brand new engine. I'm gonna break it in a little bit. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Might take a little while.
you can turn the choke off. So just let it run for about 30 seconds or so with the choke on. harassment is that what you just did when you said this person just said Day so beautiful and um, further down. Watch that I found my diamond. It's wrong, isn't it? But it feels so right. Then it's a deal? Yes, we eat our pizza the wrong way. Crust first. Introducing st I have the last slice. Actually, you're only entitled to half. Large. Sexism has become an epidemic. 